The F-16 is a multi-role, air superiority fighter jet which first started series production in 1976. Since then, it has been used in various air forces around the world thanks to its good flight characteristics, respectable payloads and excellent agility. Capable of reaching speeds in excess of Mach 2 and carrying offensive armament including, but not limited to, an internal 20mm cannon and hardpoints for numerous heat-seeking or radar-guided air-to-air missiles, it is a formidable adversary in a dogfight. Continually upgraded to remain current in the modern age, some air forces have yet to replace their fleets with more modern, next-generation aircraft which has led to this being one of, if not the most, numerous fixed-wing fighter aircraft currently in military service. Hey guys, Matt from Model Minutes here, and today I'm building and reviewing the F-16 model kit in 1-144 to scale from Academy. So let's climb into the cockpit and engage the afterburner for a bit of a wild ride, because this one is going to get a bit weird. In this video, I'm going to focus on the build and final review of the model kit, but if you'd like to see a more detailed view of what's included in the box, take a look at the unboxing video I made on this topic. I'll pop a list of the paints and products I used on the screen now, so you can get an idea of the colours I thought best matched the paint scheme in the instructions. Academy recommends this kit to those aged 14 and older. With that out of the way, let's get into it. The plastic parts are relatively flash free, and throughout this build I will remove them from their sprues with my cutters or a sharp knife. Rough areas of plastic being sanded smooth with a sanding stick. I'm using Revell Contactor Cement to join the upper and lower halves of the fuselage. I quite like this product, that fine needle really helps to get cement in the right places, but you do have to be careful that it doesn't get blocked. I add the lower half to the top part and then held it together until the cement started to bond. This is where things start to get a bit weird. The nose is added to the front of the aircraft and I can't help but feel that something looks a little off. Let's keep going though, I added the vertical tail surface to the slot at the rear of the aircraft. This was then followed by the fins on the belly, which again cement into slots. The two drop tanks come moulded in two halves, this was a simple matter to cement together. They can then be glued into the grooves on the lower wings. This was then followed by the pylons for the missiles, I had to take a little care to get them pointing straight forwards as they had a tendency to twist in those slots. The air intake comes in two halves and has to be cemented into this groove on the belly of the model. I then added the main landing gear legs which cement into the holes in the wheel wells. I think that if you wanted to depict the landing gear raised, all you'd need to do is glue the covers over the holes, but the instructions don't indicate that option. The nose wheel is added to its bay, again pushing it into its moulded holes. These extra rods of the landing gear are added, but it was a little fiddly in such a small scale. The landing gear doors can now be added as well, I had to take care to make sure they didn't fall over and dry at a funny angle. This step was repeated for the nose wheel. I've left the main wheels off for now, and I'll add them after painting. And speaking of painting, let's get that brush out. I used Humbrol 33 Matte Black, thinned with some Tamiya Acrylic Thinners X20A to help it flow and avoid leaving brush strokes. I painted the cockpit area with this, and you might have noticed that there is no detail here at all, it's just a slot in the top of the model. Because of this, I thought it would be a good idea to tint the inside of the canopy with the same black, to help hide this absolute lack of cockpit details. I masked the canopy with masking tape before gluing it onto the model. I used PVA glue to do this, as it should dry clear and strong. I'm using this acrylic primer from Valeo as my base colour. It should form a good hard wearing base for the rest of the paints. Also, being a ghost grey colour means that there are some areas that won't need another top coat as it already matches the required paint scheme. I thinned it slightly in my airbrush with more Tamiya acrylic thinner and then applied a number of thin layers, until I had an even finish. I thought this particular model would make a great practice piece for getting some more experience with airbrushing. With that paint now dry, 
I masked the underside of the model and sprayed the top with Tamiya XF19 Sky Grey, which was again thinned in my airbrush. This Vallejo Model Air Neutral Grey paint was added over the top to lighten the area around the cockpit and vertical tail surface. Tamiya XF18 Medium Blue was the next paint to be used, again thinned in the airbrush and then sprayed onto the wing areas of the model. You should be able to notice that I've masked the areas I didn't want the paint to go. I've tried my best to match the paints with the instructions, but they weren't particularly helpful, giving just a name of a paint or a FS number. I'm very fortunate to be able to afford to get new paints for specific projects though, and the main reason is due to the amazing support of my channel members here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. A massive thanks to these guys on screen. For more information on how to join these guys and the perks you get in return, take a look at the links in the description. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome my newest members. They are LegoMaster03 and CO3655, who join the intermediate tier on Patreon, whilst my channel members on YouTube are James in skill level 1 and Johan in skill level 2. Welcome to the club! With the paint on the model now dry, it's time to remove that masking tape. It's done quite a good job, with no bleed being visible. I used Humbrol Number no. 1 Grey Primer on the nose cone of the model, painting it on carefully with a brush. It's a slightly different shade of grey to the fuselage, but it wasn't quite enough, so I lightened it a little with a layer of the Vallejo Neutral Grey. K-Colors XW100 Acrylic Gloss was now sprayed over the entire model. This gloss varnish will act as a base layer for the future application of the transfers, and should avoid leaving any silvering on the plastic film. A few thin layers of this gloss would be sprayed onto the model. When it was dry, the transfers were soaked in warm water and allowed to release from their backing paper. These water stickers are not the best, but I'm using Micro Set and Sol from Microscale as my setting solutions to help them soften into the surface details. I brush Micro Set onto the model, place the transfer, and get it into position. It should then settle onto the surface and begin to stick. Micro Sol, in the red bottle, will then be brushed over the top to further soften the transfer. I find the Academy decals to be somewhat thick, papery, and prone to splitting. Fortunately, I avoided that in this build, but they still didn't settle into the surface details as much as I would have liked. Whilst they are curing, it's time to paint the missiles. I thinned Tamiya XF2 flat white with acrylic thinner, and then carefully brushed it onto the parts. A few thin layers would be needed. I also painted the wheels whilst they were on the sprue. The jet exhaust was carefully painted with Humbrol 53 gunmetal grey, which again had been thinned. Humbrol 33 matte black acrylic was used to very carefully paint the tyres on the wheels. Here, you can see that the landing gear has been painted with the previously used Tamiya XF2 flat white. I carefully cemented the wheels into place. With that done, a further coat of clear gloss was sprayed over the model. This will help protect the decals in the next step. I used my homemade enamel panel wash to carefully pick out the recessed details and panel lines. This is made from enamel paint and white spirit, and for more information you can find a specific tutorial on that topic on my channel. I carefully removed the excess wash with a cotton bud which had been dipped in white spirit. I worked in the direction of airflow to add some subtle weathering. The previously applied gloss varnish is helping to protect the paint and decals from the white spirit, whilst also giving a smooth surface that prevents the wash from sticking. Humbrol 49 Clear Matte Varnish was next to be used when everything had dried. I mixed this acrylic paint with hot water to help it flow in the airbrush and avoid leaving a white residue as it dries. A number of thin layers would be sprayed onto the model to dull down that shine. With that now dry, the previously painted jet exhaust nozzle can be cemented into place. The missiles were then carefully cemented onto their pylons on the wings and wing tips. I had to take care here to avoid getting cement in the wrong places and ruining that paint finish. I carefully removed the masking tape on the cockpit canopy. And with that, I'm calling this model done. Well, not quite, I feel like I need somewhere to display it. Maybe a little base? 
I cut a 7 inch diameter circle from some scrap card. I then drew lines on the card using a fine tip permanent marker, using my ruler as the guide for this grid work. With that done, I drew some little squiggles in places, and it is my intention that this will look like hard standing at an airbase and there are cracks in the concrete. Using some of the grey paints from before, I sprayed onto this grid work. I used the darker grey around the lines of the tarmac squares, which would act to shade the base. Using some of the grey paints from before, I sprayed onto this grid work. I used the darker grey around the lines of the concrete squares, which would act to shade the base. I then went over the entire base with a lighter grey, adding a touch of blue to fill in those gaps and give natural variation. I'm pretty much making this up as I go along, but I have used the same paints as on the F-16 so far. With that paint now dry, I used two strips of masking tape to create a line across the base. Humbrol 24 matte yellow acrylic was brushed down the centre of this line. A few coats would be needed. When that was dry and the tape removed, I added more tape, but this time masking the yellow and adding two strips either side. These strips were painted with Humbrol 33 matte black. After that had dried, I removed the tape to reveal the lines similar to those found on air bases and airports around the world to guide aircraft to their parking spots. I think I'm going to call this build complete here. Before I sum up my review, let's talk about the kit itself. I did my best to try and research the tooling and history of this kit, but the information online seemed a little patchy. I'm led to believe that this tooling dates from 1988, originally introduced by Hobbycraft, and no, not the craft shop we have here in the UK. The model has been released since 1988 a number of times, but first making an appearance in the Academy range in 1999. The version I have here dates from 2011, which is supposedly the most recent release of this kit, if you don't include the 2018 version from Hobby Time Model Kits. So yeah, the history alone is a little bit weird as the kit has changed hands and been released, re-released in the same and different boxes from various manufacturers over the years. Whilst I'm talking about this, quick tangent, but one thing that annoys me about model kit manufacturers is that many of them don't put the tool dates on the boxes, so without doing research of your own you have no way of knowing what to expect in the box. A copyright date effectively means nothing, and you could end up being severely disappointed when you get your purchase home and open the box. Ok, rant over, back to the review. I paid £3.75 in a model shop for my particular version of this kit, which in my opinion is a reasonable price for this product. At the time of this video it would seem that various online sellers had this product for sale ranging from around £2.70 here in the UK, right up to ridiculous prices 10 times that. I don't know about you, but this is not worth forking out £30 for. I'd be 100% reluctant to even fork out more than 4 or £5 for it, and there are a few reasons why. The instructions are reasonably easy to follow, but being printed in black and white, with the painting instructions being different shades of grey, it can make it hard to follow and can result in mistakes. The transfers are to the usual standard from Academy, and sadly that's a negative rather than a positive. Being thick, papery and unwilling to conform to details, I'm always reluctant to use them. The general mould quality is good, but the details are somewhat lacking. That cockpit, or lack thereof, is quite amusing. The strangest thing though that really got me is just the way it looks. That nose and cockpit canopy just looks really weird to me. It's as if the person designing this back in the 80s hadn't seen the plane in real life and was just guessing based on someone's description. If you wanted a serious model of an F-16 in 1 to 144 scale, this is not it. If however you were looking for a fun build to practice some techniques, then this is ideal, particularly if you're not too fussed about those odd details and the papery transfers. Especially if you can get it for around £3, it might just make an interesting diversion for an afternoon. For me though, I'm not sure how I feel about this one. The build was relatively painless, I got some practice in with my airbrush and feel I have improved my skills with it. The model turned out ok and that little base was a nice diversion, although the base does look a little chunky and I feel a finer pen would have made it look better, but in a larger scale it probably wouldn't be so noticeable. 
Either way though, this one is done and every time I look at the weird F16 sitting on my shelf, it helps to remind me that modelling is not just about accuracy, it's about enjoyment and self-development. After all, what would the world be without a little weird in it? And with that, it's time to end the video. Let me know what you think of this build and if you would get one of these for yourself in the comments below. In the description box you'll find links to connect with me on social media too. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support my channel for free, click that like button and subscribe with notifications on so you never miss a modelling video. Finally, all that's left to say is thanks for watching and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.